Hello, and welcome to, I think it's episode four, right? That's episode episode five. F- Really? Episode five, like one more than four, of Show Them the Door <laughs> podcast. A podcast presented to you uh, by me, who didn't realize it was my turn to introduce us, so I couldn't think of a fun a thing A person to who can't count to five. <laughs> and Louise. Christopher Conway. <laughs> <laughs> a podcast presented to you by short-term memory. <laughs> <laughs> and Christopher... Christopher who? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got, we got a we got a packed episode Jeez. today because we actually have many sports in full swing. Yeah, it's we weird got how there are so many sports. Football, true. Maybe we only have two. Football and women's and men's basketball, which you can count as two, and that's what we're going to count as two. It's so what we do. yeah, we count. We, we count. He can't count HAD to five. Majors. The reason why we're only at three is because Willem can't get to five. If we were to have more sports, I Willem, wouldn't be able to. I would have my to get another brain co-host. can't comprehend numbers that high. No, it's it's four, and then I'm like, okay, what well, comes next? I went to Todd next? County Central High School. Yeah, that's no what wonder. I <laughs> no wonder. My education, man. Okay. Um, and then anyways, football, I guess. Yeah. So, um, you know how the how that episode's gonna go is we're gonna start with football True. and we're gonna talk about um, our game versus Kentucky and then maybe add a couple comments about our next couple games, but those are not going to be very good, just as a preface. And then we're gonna go to men's basketball and talk about the two games that we've had since last podcast. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna go to women's basketball and hear about those games. So it's gonna be an overall fun episode. You know, it's always a time with Willem and I. We're going to have a tally on how many times Willem touches my shoulder because it happens so many All times the during time. the podcast. If you haven't noticed. If you I haven't mean, noticed, this is what Willem does every single podcast. You'll, I'll say something, he'll be like, and I'm telling you. It's what I do. I just I'm like, well, I'll be saying things, looking at the camera because, you know, like I want to connect with the audience maybe. And then I'll feel like a grip on my You're shoulder. Like, and I'm like, oh, so Willem's touching me. <laughs> um... So it's a good time overall. The over under is like 74. Yeah, we're going to start getting um, Vegas sports betting on the amount of times Willem touches my shoulder during the pod. I think we're like seven and we just started. Because beforehand, I oh my gosh, a ton dude. before we started recording. Okay, so nevertheless, let's let's start with football here. That, our previous statement was good. ML Sandoz was oh, proud. Stop talking. Um, so football. So football. We played Kentucky last week. And I said two things when I'm talking, when previewing the Kentucky game. I said, uh, if we play well, that we will cover the spread, which was 21 points. And then I said, if we play well, we will also make this game competitive. And we did one of those two things. We definitely covered the spread. We lost 34-17. We did not make it competitive. (laughs) It was at no point a game where I was like, oh, Vandy has a shot to win this. It was a, can we get garbage time points at the end to piss off sports betters? I looked at the thing one time, because I didn't go to that game. We didn't. We were with uh, your parents. It was tight. Um, So I get the notification. It's like, oh, Vanderbilt's only down seven to three at the first quarter. That's cool. And then next thing I know, it's like, oh. Yeah, it's like 28 to 30. points. I'm like, whoa, what happened? So, I mean, a lot of it came from offensive struggles, but. Offense, schmoffense. Our our defense also wasn't bailing us out. Um, So, on offense, Ken Seals came back to action. And. Good to see him healthy. Not good to see him. I'm glad he's healthy. He didn't have a good game. He went um, 12 for 17 for like 81 yards and a pick. Not and he scored three points when he was there. Like we went down at halftime. It was like twenty-eight to three or twenty something to three. And then Mike Wright came in, second half of the game, my man, Mike Wright, and got us up to seventeen points. He went seven for eleven passing with only like fifty yards, but he had two touchdowns. So I mean, you know, he did better, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, it just feels like our offense I didn't watch every snap of this game. So I don't know if maybe I'm the most qualified, but from every other game that I've watched, it really just feels like Mike Wright, it really feels like Mike Wright adds like a dynamic flow to this offense where it's, it just makes sense. You know, like Ken Seals took three sacks for negative 21 yards and Mike Wright rushed three times for 20 yards. So it's, do we, that's a 40 yard swing from quarterbacks just off rushing alone. You know, that gets you points, that wins you games, that builds momentum. And so it's, 
I, I hope that we start Mike Wright for the rest of the year and even maybe go forward if we don't get any better recruits. I don't know how that's going to go into next season, but I don't believe that Ken Seals gives us the best chance to win at this point in the season. I'm not putting on the helmet. Dang. Um, defensively, we, we really struggled. I, I talked about um, in the preview last week that all of Kentucky is predicated on their run game and then their pass game works off of that. And that, that is true. And we couldn't stop their run. Um, you know, it, it, they scored 34 points. And then by the end, it was they were just playing ball management. It, it really, it, it wasn't a competitive game. It was not our best game. And I'm a little, I'm, I'm disappointed because we came off a of bye week and then did that. You know, I would expect us to have like added wrinkles to the offense, added, you know, specifically game plan to get an SEC win against a team like Kentucky that's just been beaten twice by Georgia and Tennessee. Like it, it just felt like, we had an opportunity to come out at least much stronger than we did, and then we we really didn't. One bright spot is Chris Pierce Jr., one of our wide receivers. He actually got an interception. That's cool. Put that on the resume. Um, but yeah, other than that, like football was lackluster this week. I don't have as much to talk about because there wasn't as many good things and the bad things I, I've talked about for the past three episodes. That's what I'm saying. It feels, it's the same team. You know yeah. I mean? Just playing different games. You know, it's, like some teams do progress over the year and it just... It, uh, we have, sure. Sure. But it was like from abysmal to just bad. <laughs> like Yeah, the, we're, we're just regular bad now. We're yeah. Not really bad. We're normal bad. We're SEC bad as opposed to like ncaa bad true um you know we're not bottom two in the conference not bottom two in the ncaa true you know kentucky they were ranked number 12 two weeks ago losing 17 to number 12 not really the worst thing in the world no not at all that's just two touchdowns hmm? and a <laughs> yeah a um <laughs> math We've determined that Willem can't do math. This episode is presented to you by math. By Desmus calculators. <laughs> if your um, math is as bad as mine. There's a shoulder touch. <laughs> there's a, um, if your math is as bad as mine, <laughs> look up abcmouse.com. Oh where you can learn God. all your good learning settings. Willem's still on this ABC Mouse. This is actually Mouse. an app. Yeah, we're just, <laughs> we're we've gotten four episodes of people to get them hooked, all like 17 of our unique so viewers. So we can keep talking yeah, about man. ABC math. Did you ever do ABC? I did not. ABC Mouse? No, I didn't. Luke did for like a couple days. Is Luke good at math? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was the ABC <laughs> Mouse. Maybe it was. I don't know, man. I couldn't tell you. But, um. But oh, so I'll talk about the, the next two games of football. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we won't have an episode next week. Very sad. Oh, oh, it's oh, no. Thanksgiving break. And yes, so we will, we will be not available to come into the studio. It's very sad. I'll miss you all very, very much. Thanksgiving. Have um, a great Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving. Chris, Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for you, Willem. So um, the next two games um, are versus Ole Miss and Tennessee. Lane Kiffin. Oh, I hate Lane Kiffin I with a passion. Lane Kiffin. Growing up in Knoxville, I hate Lane Kiffin. I hate Lane Kiffin. Oh, I'd kill him. No, <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd commit murder. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, we can say that on the pod. Is man, Lane Kiffin Lane... watching? I hope so. I hope he we're, tagging, we're tagging Lane Kiffin. At Lane Kiffin. Um, man, at the Tennessee game, he walked out, everyone booed him, he waved. I'm somebody, like, somebody, gosh, somebody, somebody, they, people throwing stuff at him. I hate Lane Kiffin. I hate I, Lane I, Kiffin. Anyway, so we play Ole Miss and Tennessee, two of the most dynamic offenses in the SEC. Uh, they play Ole Miss first. Um, Ole Miss, you know, I don't really expect that game to be close, not really matter the spread. If the spread's like 45 points, I'd say we'd cover it. I don't really know what it is right now. We'll see. Um, against Tennessee, I mean, pretty much the same. I think Tennessee has a little bit of a worse offense, but a little bit of a better defense. And so I don't expect either of the games to be close, in all honesty. I'll actually be at the Vanderbilt-Tennessee game I in Knoxville because I will be home. Cool. So I might... Actually, Nalen Stadium has the worst Wi-Fi known to man, so I will not be live tweeting that game. So if there is live tweets, it would be from Willem, even though I'm at the game. So maybe expect that. I really don't know. This episode is presented to you by Chris not wanting to do his dang job. That is not true. I literally can't. I, I know. Quite I've been, yeah, I know I'm, how bad the Wi-Fi is. The Wi-Fi is terrible. Uh -huh. but, so, you know, either I really don't expect those games to be close. I w if, if we made them competitive, even through halftime, I would be happy. Yeah. Um, Dub. Yeah. So... 
that's pretty much all of football. So now let's go to the basketball games. We actually went to both of them. Yeah, uh, both the men's basketball games. Mm-hmm. We played. Who played first? Texas State. Texas State. Listen, man. That was one heck of a game. Scotty Pippen had 30. Did Scotty Pippen have 30? Yeah, the Texas State game, he put up 30 points. I do not think that's true. Look it up. I'm looking it up. I thought he had like 23. Here goes Chris. Defying I, I, me. I could be Just entirely I could be entirely wrong. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't think he had 30. That's kind of crazy. In the most recent game versus VCU, he had like 10. So he was bad. It was the tale of um, it was the duality of Vanderbilt basketball these past two games. The duality. And maybe it's because um, Texas State's a bad team and VCU is a good team. But I'm telling you, the VCU game could have been a football score. Oh, this is horrific. I was afraid. So start talking about the the Texas State game. Yeah. Okay. So we went there. It was really cool. Uh, offense took a second to click, but we clicked fairly fast. We started scoring consistently. They're bad, so we started defending well consistently. And then later into the first half, we started giving up a little bit. They came back. They took it within like nine, and I was like, "Oh, I'm a little worried." Yeah, they got to like I'm seven, a worried. and I was I was feeling the pressure. And a then Scotty Pittman turned it back on. We put him on the floor and really got stuff done. There was a stretch of a couple minutes from like eleven minutes to nine minutes in the second half. Where we drained like four threes in a row, and then it was suddenly we were winning by twenty. Yeah, I for us one minute I'm thinking, wow, I mean like you know three threes and they're winning, and then a couple minutes later I look back up and I'm like, oh, Holy we're shit. up like seventy to fifty. What's happened? What 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 have we done? He did have thirty. He had thirty points. I'm wrong. I'm that guy. You know who didn't have thirty points? Me. Quentin Melora Brown. <laughs> okay, cute Quentin. <laughs> Defensively, an anchor. Yeah, sure. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Offensively, terrible. <laughs> can't get it done. It, it just, he's the I love him out on the floor. Oh, no, I want him out on the floor. I don't feel like there's a person that we have that is better than Quentin regarding like a starting center. Frank, maybe? No. Frank he's... stretches the floor. He can't do anything in the paint. No. It... I haven't seen him in the paint once. The thing is, is Quentin, he, he's the classic big guy who, um, you know, he never really refined certain, like, ball handling skills, which everybody needs to do now. Oh, like, yeah. Nowadays in basketball, you can't not be able to Not be dribble. able to have the ball. We passed him the ball, like, on an inbound. We passed him maybe... It's like he does like it... five times off the inbound. We gave him the ball, and he had to do something with it real quick. And, and, and you could yeah. see he's like, oh. It's, yeah, the it's VCU like... Game, it's like he doesn't, he doesn't trust himself to dribble. And maybe he shouldn't. I don't know what is how he does. Granted, he's seven feet tall. Yeah, but I, you know, I still I want. I wish he was a better ball handler. Well, I wish we scored more points. Sure, but I'm just saying. I think it makes him a I bit. I wish I had a hundred bucks. It makes him a defensive liability. Well, not defensive, an offensive, offensive. liability. Defensive, he's nice. Defensive, he is. I love crazy. Quinn. My man has the defensive IQ seriously high he doesn't get rebounds sometimes which is kind of weird yeah it's weird how they just don't don't go his way because he's there well it's he sees like what's happening it's almost like he just pull him down sometimes and i don't understand why because he's the tallest kid on the court at all I mean, times and he got long arms my dude seriously is huge i love quinn and it, it's like he has little awareness to the ball but he's really good at defensive awareness. Like he understands how offenses flow and understand where he to knows place what he himself. He should be doing. And, but he does it. All, he also he executes extremely well yeah, on exactly. defense. It's just that when it it comes to like getting the when ball the himself, in the air. no, it, it's when he has the potential to touch the ball. It's like his brain shuts down. It's weird. And it's weird. And I think that he'll grow past it, and he, then he could be a really good player for sure. It's just that sometimes you, you scratch your head a bit. Like, there was a... This is getting to the VCU game. But there was a play that we had drawn up where you we, you throw it to Quentin at the high post. And then he immediately is supposed to drop it off to Miles Studi on the low block to get a, a rebound. And he knew that that's the play. That's what they had drawn up the entire time. 
And then he got the ball and then hesitated. And then Miles' defender got there and, like, broke up the pass or Miles, he, missed, or the Miles missed a shot or something. Because he just didn't get there right when he needed to. And if he just got the pass on time, it's a clean shot, easy Perfect. bucket. He's right under the basket. It was, he was literally wide open. It, it's just, it's, it's frustrating because it felt like our... During the VCU game, our offense, and during parts of the Texas State game, our offense was just a step out of sync. It was bad. Also, there was a kid on Texas State who was so small. Little boy. Number 12, Mason. What was his last name? Oh, shoot. Um, Three. Um, um, it was number 12, Mason Harrell. Harrell, yeah, yeah, Mason yeah. Mason yeah. Harrell. First he was of- about... This tall? He was maybe 4'11". He's a little kid, man. He, all, he somehow looked 12 and 80 at the same time. Because his, his hair was funny. His hairline was, like, at the top of his head. He was, like, nappy. Um, My boy was not doing good for and himself. And he put up, like, 16 points He put up 16 on us. us. Like, he was kind of saucing us up. He was the leading scorer. But, but like, gosh dang, if he wasn't a small child. Yeah, I was We were talking to the dude next to us and the girl below us. I said, he wears 12 because that's how many years he's been alive. Yeah, I was like, man, I didn't know they called up the middle school team. You really made fun <laughs> of this we, We're kid. sitting there making fun he's of this kid. He's a senior, too. Man, poor kid. He's yeah. not growing anymore. Yeah, The guy, we were behind the, the dang uh, scorer's table. Yeah. Dude, the scorer's table was making fun of him. Yeah. yeah. The guy with the, the, the yeah. list of their players. So, Man, <laughs> I really hope if any of you watch the broadcasts and you look it like pans to the scorers table, you can just see us back there. We're just right make, behind them. It's so much fun. It's a great time. But um, you know, I feel like defensively we've played well both games. For sure, we executed. Um, well, they only put up what forty points in the VCU game. Yeah, moving. Let's let's, let's just move to the VCU game. There's less good hey, to talk on. about. Things to say. Okay, things to say. Scotty Pippen. First Scotty game. Pippen. Absolute man. I see why he's in the conversation for player of the year. Yep. Right. Jordan Wright gets stuff done, right? Sure. Miles Studi shot well, did good. First game, yeah. The guys we had coming in off the bench. Key uh, contributors. Trey Thomas, guys like that, really did well when they went in there. It was nice. Our team executed, excuse me, sorry, certainly at times it wasn't wonderful. Yeah. But it was nice when they were out there. It was a well-executed game. Jerry Stackhouse was looking absolutely dripped out of his mind. Jerry Stackhouse is the freshest dude I've ever seen in my whole life. I see him and I'm like... What am I wearing? Hold on. <laughs> like, man, I, if you I saw, need... if you watched the game against Texas State and you saw my man, he was He was dripped out during the VCU sweaty. game, too. He was, he was also pissed during the VCU game. He was game. so mad. There was a time where he just went and sat down on the bench. Like, he was like, if you don't, if, if you don't want to be coached, I'm not coaching no more. And... <laughs> yeah, I, that's probably exactly what he said. Oh, my gosh. That he's cracks usually me. out there courtside. And then for a good, like, four minutes of the VCU game, he's Sitting down on the bench, not saying nothing. It was but like, yeah. That's all takeaways, in my opinion, of the uh, Texas State game. Nice win. I was really excited to see that. It was nice. It was the first. Yeah. Was it the first home game? Um, second home game? Second home know, game. Man, no, know. second home game. You're right. Um, <laughs> um, so moving on to the VCU wait, game. I, 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 have, I, have a, I have an insight. I feel like yeah, the okay. Texas State and VCU games were the two sides of Scottie Pippen Jr. as he is developing it's as like a Dr. player. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, sort of. It's when he is, when Scottie Pippen is on, Scottie Pippen Jr., um, during, like, during the Texas State game, he's making threes, making shots, distributing the ball well. He, he's always, he's played really good defense this year. Mm-hmm. Like, it, he is just overall affecting the game in a really positive manner. When Scottie Pippen Jr. is off, like during the VCU game, he's not scoring. He's trying to play hero ball. He's dribbling far too much. You'll get double teamed and try to dribble out of it. You just got to pass to the open guy. And there were so, like, VCU's game plan was bracket Scottie Pippen Jr. whenever you possibly can. It was apply full court pressure and bracket Scottie Pippen Jr. It'll make anybody else on Vanderbilt beat you. Because he crumbled then. It was weird. It, it was, I didn't expect it. It was concerning. It For was the preseason SEC player of the year? Yeah, it was every time he'd be dribbling up the court and he'd be have it on the like right wing, he would dribble all the way to the other side of the floor instead of just passing the ball. Yeah, let the offense work. And sure, they weren't making wonderful off-ball movements. And sure, stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not all Scotty's fault, but I feel like 
he, but he just was, wasn't making was, great decisions. Yeah, there was more he could have done. And, I mean, it stunts our offense. Because our offense, the same way that if you have, like, an MVP in the NBA, you get so much attention that it opens other guys up. Mm-hmm. That's and he what, just didn't do it. That's what Scottie Pippen did, but he just didn't pass the ball to the people that were open. And then not to mention that we went, we shot 8% from the three-point line. Um, and a lot of that was just us missing open threes, which you just can't do. Like, we went two for, we went two for 25 from three-point. We point. shot a solid 8%, which is probably around what I shot in intramural, in intramural basketball. Yeah. And, and I'm terrible. The thing is, is if we just shoot 30%, and we make almost four times the threes that we did, meaning we make roughly seven or eight, we actually win that game. Yeah. Um, we we lost the game 48 to 37. We only let VCU put up 48 points. If somebody is putting up 48 points on you... You should be winning every game by literally, 20. I'd, I'd assume that if one team is in the 40s... You're winning the game. You're winning the game you're 99% losing, of the time. You're not losing by 11. We, yeah, we, we put it, up 30 points. 37 points. 30? 37. Teams like Gonzaga have that in the first 10 minutes of the game. Okay. Let's go Bulldogs. <laughs> Willem is a Gonzaga basketball fan. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, it, was, it was sad. But it was, yeah, it was like... Willem and I were there, and we brought uh, Willem brought one of his friends. I take Zion to the game, and we get killed. Yeah, it was. It was maybe just, it's him. Maybe it's Zion. His presence. But it was just like, it, the thing is, is I almost like it wasn't a coaching issue. It I was three seconds. It was a Scottie Pippen not distributing issue. Us not knowing how to run the offense without Scottie playing at a decent level. Hey, and Jordan Wright was a bum that game. Oh my God, Jordan Wright couldn't catch a cold. Um, I'm telling you, there was a time where he like put the sticky stuff on his shoes, getting onto the court, and then he wiped on his hands. And I was like, oh, maybe he won't drop as many balls. And then he got immediately past the ball and then fumbled it out of bounds. And the I first, was like, like four minutes of the game, they pass it to him twice. He's like, yeah, man, just couldn't just grab catch. the ball. What are you doing? Man, just you know needs. I mean? He yeah. spotted up to get like how many threes do you think he shot? I don't know the stat, but he oh, shot like, quite a few threes. Did he make any? I think he made one. Man, no, he, he made he, de- he definitely threes. he definitely made one. Um, but okay, let's let's see how many shots Mr. Wright took. Mr. Wright, Wrong. Mr. Wright took um, six threes and went one for six. He was him and Frank were the only ones that made a three. I like Frank. One for six and one for five. Uh, Scotty was zero for three with two for ten shooting from the floor <laughs> with eight points. He didn't have double digits. Thank gosh for field goals. I uh, free throws. Yeah, it was It was just, there was no offense. And when you don't have offense, you can't win games. <laughs> it's weird how that works. We, we talk a lot about how the fact if you don't score, you can't win. But this was a really good example of that. Yeah. He, the, like, in the conversation for Naismith Player of the Year, mm. SEC Preseason Player of the Year, puts up eight points. Mm, we shoot a collective eight percent from the f- three from the three point line. Mm-hmm. We we put up thirty points. Thirty seven. Same difference. It's yeah. in the threes. And then we expect to win ball games. It was a a poor showing. Jerry to say Stackhouse the least. was so mad. I think okay. So <laughs> yell at him, Jerry. What was funny yell at him. was so that at halftime we were down one. And I feel like Jerry Stackhouse absolutely tore into the team for being like, I don't understand how you guys are missing so many shots. Y'all are bums. <laughs> and then we came out, and I don't think it motivated them. It just made them, like, kind of pissed off. And they so, and then they kept missing. And I think VCU went on, like, a 9-0 run to start the second half. Yeah, I was like, hey. You and know, I was like, hey, wait, a, hold on. Why, like, why are we down 10? No, wait just a minute. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, that's pretty much all of basketball. We played Texas Tech on Sunday. I'm not Texas Tech. We should we play Tennessee. I was say. We play uh, Tennessee Tech on Sunday. Oh, thank goodness! A much worse team. I thought we were playing uh, Texas Tech, and I was like, oh no. Yeah, no. We play. Oh, no. We play Tennessee Tech. That that should be a win. It but you should never, be. The thing is, VCU is a good team. VCU has a ter- been a tournament team many times that yeah, I've Virginia watched the tournament. Well. Um. So. Who knew Virginia had anything good about it? 
They have Virginia, VCU, Virginia Tech. I'm not hearing anything good. Yeah, I'm just saying. The, Virginia's I've, choked away everything ever. Virginia won a tournament more recently than Gonzaga has. Cool. Who's lost this season? Virginia to an unranked team. I, Who hasn't I, lost this season? It doesn't matter when you got a Gonzaga. chip. Gonzaga. When you have a chip. A potato chip. Oh, got them. Um, um, <laughs> that was the year after they lost in the round of 64. But they have a... Do they, does Gonzaga have a ring in the past 10 years? They don't have a ring ever. It don't matter. They had one good team that went all the way. Cool. I will take. Congrats. A, I'll take a ring over. Um, over being the number one team right now. Okay, but they still haven't won. With five guys in their respective player of the year in their position conversation. But if like you don't win a championship, what does it matter? Uh, who went to the championship last year? Virginia. Baylor. I hey, didn't think so. Who who went? But Baylor. Who went? Baylor went. Who else went? Gonzaga. Uh huh. Who lost? You know who didn't go? <laughs> who lost? You know who wasn't even there? <laughs> Will- Every other team in basketball. Willem's just mad because I was furious. He was he was actually. Genuinely- I almost cried after Jalen Suggs hit the buzzer beater to send us there. I almost cried. It was it was, it was one of the greatest moments. Who were y'all playing? It was UCLA, wasn't it? We played UCLA this year. Oh, that'll be a good game. Anyway, another point. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much all of basketball. We played Tennessee Tech. It'll be good. Uh, we should win that game, assuming we don't play like Garbo. Um, I will also not be at that game. We're not. All, we, I will be home for Thanksgiving, so we'll alone. So unless you might be going to that game, are you? Me? You uh, say you say you might be going. I might ask if my uh, family wants to go. So maybe Willem will be at the game. Maybe uh, I don't. I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. Do I look like a guy who plans things? No. Let me grab my plan I'll, I'll for what t- I'm about uh, to say for women's basketball. Women's basketball. Women's. Our women's basketball team has. Has had some struggles in the early. The exact the words I use in my little uh, note thing is, "women's basketball." Wow, two losses. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> those are my exact words. <laughs> oh, you did. Wow, <laughs> wow, two losses. Oh my gosh. So, uh, women's basketball. We won, Coach Ralph's first game. Yeah, we talked about that last ball. Yeah, exactly. And then I was like, "We're playing Little Rock. This should be easy." You did say now that, who too. little now? You did say that, too. <laughs> it's Little Rock, man. So, uh, the issue here. So, we lost to Little Rock. Yeah, it was 56 <sighs> to 40. Wow. It was bad. I lost 16 That's to bad. Little Rock. <laughs> if put you and me on our team, like a team of 13 of us against Little Rock. I think we lose by 14. I think, yeah, I ain't losing by 16. No, heck no. I ain't no. losing by 16. Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> put me out there. Oh, I'm definitely not going to shoot 22% from three-point percentage because that's what Vanderbilt did. Well, I mean, that's triple what the big guys shot. Uh, true! <laughs> Four. <laughs> um, so here's the issue. Our leading scorer was Briley Bartram. She's in my 2100 class. Briley, you're, you're dope. Briley, Nobody? get on the pod. I see okay. you walk out of class so much. <laughs> you're like, I go to the bathroom. And you just dip for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Okay. Funniest I'm at, thing. I'm at five arm touches. But of the people that I know, Jerry Stackhouse dresses the best out of anyone ever in existence. And then Briley Bartram dripped out of her mind for no reason all the time. Yeah. Have you seen her shoes? Yeah, yes. Incredible. Oh, yeah. She'd... Every day. Yeah. I'm like, geez, Louise, I should have been a women's basketball player. Mm-hmm. Where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? I lost a friend. We sang that song the other day. Yeah. Yeah, don't. Never mind. <laughs> so she had 11, which is dope, but like nobody else had any points. She shot four of 11, uh, you know, and she makes three. She's a really good shooter. Um, it, she's a wonderful key in our team. But when she's the only one that clicks, it kind of sucks because like nobody else did well that game. No team can have they're, one. They're leading to her. Guess how many they had. Guess. 30. Did you look at the thing? Yep. Dang it. You <laughs> looked at the computer, you cheater. I didn't look at the computer now. I looked at it mm-hmm. earlier. Why are you getting so damn close with that finger? <laughs> anyway, please continue. Uh, so that's a bummer, man. Yeah. Four, four of 11 shooting, 15 points for our leading scorer. Their leading scorer had like 30 on like above 50% shooting, I think. For a team that plays defense like we do, I didn't expect it to have 30. Right? Yeah. So we shot... 32% field goals, which is better than the guys. 22% f- from the three-point line, which is not great. And then 50% f- 
from the charity stripe, which is not 50% cool. from free throw? One of two. We only had two? Except bigger. No, we had a lot more. Oh, I was like, we had a lot more, had... but like we missed half of them. Oh my I'm saying. God. Um, I don't know off dome exactly how many free throws we shot, but it wasn't great. So we had uh, twice as many turnovers as them. Man, so we just played bad. They had like 15, we had like 30. They outplayed us in offense, defense, and transition basketball. <laughs> it's weird how every facet of the game we didn't do well. So neither offense was good besides 30 point girl, right? So, I mean, our defense played I other than her. Yeah. I don't think they had an, I think they had two other people in double digits, but then nobody else mm -hmm. had any points on their team. Our defense was I, neither one of our offense clicked ever. It was just weird. Yeah. Terrible game. Mm -hmm. But like, it is what it is. Um, so it's a young team. We mm -hmm. have a brand new coach and that's just how it goes. You take these weird losses early into your coaching career right. and we'll get better over time and that's just what we'll do. Right? Build the program. Yes. And the moment you've all been waiting for, I know you're all thinking it, how many points did our favorite player have? And to remind you, who's our favorite player, Chris? Kendall, first name? Kendall. Kendall Cheeseman. Kendall Cheeseman, I, freshman. Kendall number, Cheeseman. Number 15. Number, coming in at... Six foot three, I think? Six foot three. Oh my God. She's tall. Kendall Cheeseman, um, I want her on the pod. We're going to make it happen, hopefully. If she doesn't leave we, us we, on we, red we, like Jalen Mahoney. We've already guessed what her favorite cheese is. Yeah, I said... Uh, what? You said provolone. I said provolone. Which is solid like cheese. I think it's Anthony's favorite cheese. My it's brother. a melting cheese. I said that I'll last cry. time. I, said, <laughs> I will cry. <laughs> um, so I know you're all thinking, how many points your favorite player have? How many points? She has zero. Oh, no. I think she missed like three shots. <laughs> that was it. She had a couple turnovers, a couple fouls. It wasn't a great game. But she's young. She's a kid. I'm trying to think of a cheese pun. I don't got it on me. Nah, please. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Right? Um, I'm going to say cheddars and you're going to die. That's so funny. Um, man, I'm telling you, maybe like five times between last episode and now, we'll bring it up and talk about it and laugh for like ten minutes. We'll be like doing homework and I'll be like, it's one of the be it's one of the, it's one of the best things I think, think I've ever Jason said. Likes that was one of the best things I've ever said. I love you said you you to quote Chris. You said cheeseman. No, you said cheddar. And I went cheeseman. <laughs> and the way you do that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. And it was so funny in the moment. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> Cheese so yeah. cheeseman didn't do well. No. But she's young. Poor she's cheeseman. Kid. She just graduated high school. Playing an elite level SEC, sure, Little Rock's not good. But, you know what I mean? Coming off the bench, it's understandable. She'll grow. We're so proud of you, Cheese. Much love. Um, so. You're the only Cheese that Willem loves. Yeah, because it'll kill me. Um, so, other than that, my exact words in my planning is Cheese points, dash, zero, frowny face. <laughs> um, so, then we played... Middle Tennessee State University. MTSU. Ooh, that's where Tanner takes classes. Yep. Not that anyone cares, but that's my older brother. He takes classes there. Uh, uh, so we didn't have really good odds of winning the game, which I didn't know until I looked afterwards. Um, Pre-game, the ESPN odds said like they had a 75% chance of winning Damn. at the tip-off. And I'm like, is MTSU women's basketball good? I guess so. I, I didn't know. All right. MTSU isn't good at anything. They have a... Um, They're in the middle of Tennessee. I don't know that much. They were... Our, them in Memphis sometimes go back and forth in terms of football being like the group of five team that like is one of the top football teams. Really? Yeah, I think they played... Um, oh, like, in the like, state of Tennessee. Like, no, 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 no. Like of the group of five. Yeah, there's the power five in football. There's also the group of five. Really? And so I think... I didn't know that. The Cotton... What conference are they in? CUSA? Mm, Conference USA. It's um, pretty cool. The Cotton Bowl every year is a Cotton Power Bowl. Five team versus the best of the Group of Five teams. Really? So like Cincinnati has been in the Cotton Bowl the past few years. Are they a Power Five? No. no? C Cincinnati is in. I have no idea. I thought they maybe were the Cincinnati, American Conference. I thought they were in uh, like the ACC for some reason. They're not in football. Huh. I don't, maybe, may, may, no, maybe they are. 
Welcome to Show Me the Door, a podcast where we randomly think about random stuff and really get confused. Anyway, but on the point. So, is, like, we MTSU, played MTSU. MTSU's good at a couple things. Evidently, women's basketball. So, we had really low odds. Uh, at one point, the score was 24 to 23. We were down one point, and we still only had, like, a 30% chance of winning. Good. Like, that was the highest odds we had. So, like, makes sense. Hey, and you know what? We only lost... 55 to 46. That's Only nine six points. Arm touches. But that's nine points, right? Um, that's not bad at all. Uh, we shot 30% from the field, 18% from the three point line, and 87% from the free throw line, which is really nice because I like free throws. We throw them for free and we made them, right? Um, so, you know, cool stuff. We were out-rebounded, like, 41 to 30. 33, actually. So, like, that's not cool. I don't like being out-rebounded. I think that's very indicative of how games will go. Yeah. Because that's the thing that Gonzaga sucks at every once in a while. We get out-rebounded like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it's a personal vendetta I have against rebounding. Um, so, our point guard, Cambridge, right? Yeah, in Cambridge. She put up a career high 19 points. Good for Cambridge. Yeah. Big ups to you, Jordan. Big ups on Jordan Cambridge. Yes. Oh. Uh, she had like an assist, three steals, and then like six turnovers again. So like we're kind of turnover heavy team, but it is what it is. We're young. Mm-hmm. We can clean that up easily going into conference play. She also had like nine rebounds, three of which were offensive rebounds, which I love. We know. Yeah. We know. We talked about we offensive know. rebounds last time. We also talked about Cheddars. If you don't know what Cheddars is, look them up. I put out a poll on my like personal Instagram, and I was like, do you guys like Cheddars? And there were some people, like a good percentage, that were like, what's Cheddars? And I'm like... Also, Cheddars did vote on the poll. Cheddars' official Instagram account voted on my poll. They said they like Cheddars, which makes sense thinking about what it. What if they didn't? <laughs> if they voted, what's Cheddars? I'd cry. <laughs> it would have been insane. So, um... Other than Cheddar's, Jordan did really well. We just didn't get there. We didn't yeah. rebound. We didn't put in shots like we needed to. It's and so all those little keys to success along the way. But it's growth from the last absolute L to Little Rock. Right. It's as if we were coached well. We turned around and put in a good effort. Against a team at, that at was... Middle Tennessee, which is a lot better than Little Rock, Arkansas. Right. Um, so, I mean, from what I'm seeing about literally all of our sports teams is that we're young. We're not the most experienced. We don't have the highest amount of talent, but we're you need me. but but we're we're all progressing in the right direction, which I think is really important. Yeah, exactly. That's all I gotta ask. And for. I think that's that's really the main takeaway from from even, everything. That's Vanderbilt. Yeah, as a sports community, right? Other than like baseball and bowling. Yeah. Uh, table tennis. Anyway, I don't know. but uh, and the final question that we're all wondering. Did Cheeseman have her comeback game and, and give us all a good day? Cheeseman did not. Cheeseman didn't play. I, Frowny face again in the nuts. Dang. Dang it. Well, Man. she'll play next game. And, oh, if she's going to go on a tear and put up like 57,000 points. It's going to be great. Cheeseman, we love you. and uh, Please yeah. come back. Um, I love that young talent on the team doing well. The leadership, Jordan putting up the best she's ever scored, scoring-wise, in her career here, four years. That's nice. Um, so it's, it's, there are good things to see, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you can see growth, um, you know, and it's exciting. And so they play next in, like, maybe an hour. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember who they play, but they play, like, at 7. I don't know what time it is. Mm-hmm. What time is it, like, 4.30? 430, yeah. 424, cool. They play like seven. So, inshallah, they win. Inshallah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, well, that was, you know. That's pretty much all we got for today. That's that's about it. We want to talk about... Uh, no, we already kind of previewed football. Never mind. I'm just yeah. dumb. Don't so, me. I mean, again, it's always nice to talk to you guys. It's sad that we won't have an episode next week. But yeah. I'll manage. Inconsolable. I will be. Maybe we'll we'll have some exclusive Twitter. Maybe we'll go on Instagram and do something. Yeah, we'll do an Instagram live, maybe. No, I don't think people will watch our Instagram. Would you watch our Instagram live? 
I th- I was just thinking like we'll put up some stuff on Instagram. Oh, I mean that'd be cool if we was on like, Instagram. Yo. Anyway, we but might. We'll, 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 we'll workshop around. it. Yeah, we'll workshop it. We'll if you have any out. ideas, please, because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, but we'll do something. Chris runs the Twitter, so like, yeah, it's on him for that. I know I'll be doing something on the Instagram. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, but doing our thing. Overall, you know, it's nice to talk to you guys every week. Yeah, and we'll I'm see thankful you. for you. We'll see you guys. You in, in particular, not not anyone else. Just you. You. Um, But yeah, I, I guess we'll see you guys in two weeks. I guess we will. All right. Bye. Bye.